Hi and welcome to Velo GPS. In this video we're going to show you how to set up the data screens on your Garmin Edge 830. So to start off with we need to select the settings option from the bottom left followed by the activity profiles option. We're next going to choose the ride profile and in this instance the road profile followed by the data screens option. Now we're in the data screens option we can see we have screen 1, lap summary, maps, elevation and group track list. But to start off with, we're just going to set up screen one. So we'll scroll back to the top and select screen one. Here we have layout and data fields which we can update. And once selected, we see that we have six options currently set up, but we can have as few as one by scrolling to the left. So it's just a single data field here and as many as 10 data fields. So we're just going to scroll across to the right and you can see that we have a full screen of 10 data fields. Now we tend to find that that looks a little bit cluttered and our preferred option is probably to have around about seven data fields. So here we have four smaller data fields at the bottom of the screen followed by three larger ones at the top but we actually like the second option that has a single large data field in the middle, four smaller ones and then two small ones at the top. So once we're happy with the layout we select the right hand side arrow and you can see that the screen says tap a field to swap or double tap a field to edit. So we're just going to change the data fields that we have and we'll start off with the one in the middle. Now if we tap it or rather double tap it, it opens up the data category options and you can see by scrolling up that we have a variety such as popular, speed, distance, timer, elevation, navigation, mountain bike performance, graphical, uh, other cadence so a whole selection of options there but we're just going to start off with a simple uh, speed parameter so we select speed and then we have a choice of data fields within the category and again we're just going to go with a simple speed data field so there we go we can see that the large data field is now updated so now if we take a look at the other data fields, we have a look up in the top left and I prefer to have average speed over on the top left. And you recall if you tapped a field and highlighted it, you could swap it by tapping one of the other fields. So we tap average speed, tap speed and you can see that the two have now swapped over. So we're happy with average speed up on the top left and now we want to update the top right data field. So we've double tapped that and I tend to have just a simple distance data field here. So we select that. Okay, so that's the top sort of portion of the screen that we've updated. Now, down on the bottom half, I tend to have some of my navigation data fields in the bottom two data fields. So if we just select the right-hand side one, and then we'll scroll down to the navigation category. And within this, there's probably a couple of data fields that I like to have, such as distance to next or next point location. So this tells me uh, what the turning is or road name is at the next point on my course, if I have a pre-uploaded course. So selecting the bottom left, we're again going to select the navigation option. And this time, I think we were going to go distance to next, weren't we? There we go. So we'll select that. And we've got the two navigation fields down on the bottom of the screen. So finally, we're just going to move into the middle here. And I quite like to have some basic parameters here, um, some general information such as time of day. So that's in the other category. And we scroll up and select time of day. And we can see that on the field just to the left I have timer selected which will give me the uh, duration of my ride time. So I'm quite happy with that and once you're happy with your data fields you select the little tick at the bottom there and you can see that page has seven data fields displayed for screen one. So next on the screen we have lap summary. Now that just, well in fact this one uh, wasn't turned on so we've turned it on but in actual fact it's not particularly a screen that we tend to use so you can just remove that screen. Um, so that's how you do so. If we have a look at map now, um, we can choose within the data fields um, on the map. So the map displays a map when you're navigating a route and you can choose to have two data fields, one or none, displayed at the bottom portion of the screen. So if we just select two now, we can show you what that looks like. So here's our map and then we've got the two data fields at the bottom. So I'm quite happy with speed, but I think we'll just change heading. So if we tap on that, we can change that to something simple and I think we'll probably go for distance uh, is what we normally have displayed on that data field. So there you can see it's updated. Now to go back, once you're happy with that screen, you just select the little back arrow here and that takes you back. 
And you can see just in the middle, you do have the option to show the elevation profile. So this would be where you've uploaded a course and you can display on the map page the profile of any climbs. Um, but we're going to turn that off because we tend to find that it's a little bit compact. It takes up too much screen space. But if we have a look at the next page, this is the elevation page. So again, if we tap on layout, what we'll see here is the elevation page displays a graph of distance over elevation. So again, if you've uploaded a course, you'll see a graph displayed here. Um, and again, you can change the two settings that are displayed down at the bottom, but it does help you with um, your pace on a climb when you have the graph and it shows you your position on there. So if we tap on heading, I think we'll change this to speed. And then perhaps the elevation category will change to something that's more related to elevation itself. So um, if we scroll back up, we'll probably select a grade from these options. There we go. So we'll tap on grade and you can see that the field's updated. So again, we tap the back arrow to go back. And then if we go back again, what we want to do now is think about whether we wanted to add in an additional data screen. So we've added in a data screen and we have options to choose uh, just a plain data screen, virtual partner, lap summary, that was the one we deleted, cycling dynamics, e-bike metrics if you've got an e-bike, some fancy stuff there, workout segment, there's a whole host of um, data screens you can choose but we're just going to add in an additional data screen and what we're going to do, you can see that there's no data field selected at the moment. We're just going to scroll down to, I think it's gears, the option. Um, and we're going to add in, if you've got a fancy bike with electronic gears, so DI2, oops, we've hit the wrong one. Um, so DI2 or uh, SRAM ETAP, you can have telemetry displayed that relates to things like uh, the, the gear you're in, the battery level, etc. So we're just selecting all of these options now just to give you an idea what the screen looks like and show you how to add in a screen. So we've got 8 out of 10 data fields. We're happy with that. We'll select the tick and again we can swap data fields or edit them again in the same fashion but you can see here from the screen that you know again we've got a graphical display at the top for the gears you're in the gear ratio battery levels etc etc so it just shows you an additional data screen there so we're happy with that one and all we're going to do now is just select the tick icon um, and go back to the uh, data screen sort of selection page now what you can see here is uh, screen 2 is appearing at the bottom of the page, but if you want it to slot in behind, for example, screen 1, that's quite a logical place. What you need to do is it's selected, you just hit the up arrow, and you can see it bumping up the running order. And now you can see that it's displayed after screen number 1. So again, hit the tick when you're happy with that. And at the moment, it's showing that it's not displayed screen 2. So if we go back into it, we can turn hide screen off. And then we go back and we will notice that screen 2 now appears as a displayed screen in the running order. So uh, last but no means least, we've got group track displayed there. Now that will only again work if you've got that option selected and you've got connections. So other people that you've connected with in group track and they're in range. So it's a nice way of seeing where your ride partners are, particularly if you're going to meet up. So... We're just scrolling back, and what we're going to do now is have a look at what those screens look like if you were making a ride. So you'd have hit the the, uh, the road option, started your Garmin at the bottom there, and that's the first data screen. To change it, you just swipe across. Dead easy, it's a touch-sensitive screen, so that was screen two. Swipe again, and we have the map page. The GPS is turned off at the moment. Um, and then we've got our speed and distance uh, categories at the bottom there. And then finally, we're back to the elevation page. So again, if you had a course, you would see that displayed. Swipe again, and it goes back to the first screen. You can swipe left, right, any direction you like. Now, a neat little trick, uh, if you want to change any of the data fields on the fly, is you tap and hold the screen. So this is whilst you were riding. You'll see it highlights. And then if you let go, it brings up the data field categories, and you can pick a new data field to update. So here we're going to choose the graphical option, because it was one of our larger data fields. And you've got a range of graphs, bars, etc. So I think we'll just choose heart rate graph here. And you can now see on the fly that we've updated that central data field, a large one, which would have a graph in the lower portion. It would show us our beats per minute in the top, average and max uh, just below that. So it's a really handy way of updating data fields on the fly. So again, tap and hold, takes you back, and we'll just pop speed back into there, selecting speed, and that's updated. So that, in a few short minutes, is how to update the data fields on your Garmin Edge 830. If you've liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for plenty more videos to come. All right, kick back, relax, and let's hit it again while you go tell your mother, father, cousin, the kid, and your other friends that don't even have a clue what this doo-doo crew is about to do. You know it ain't fool's gold. This is crazy.
kryptonite Super MCs freeze when I hit the mic, right? EFF is the AKA I keep it poppin' like Bubble W 